Hello, my name is Jimmy Lee. I'm a child specialist based in Monash Clinical School, Jogoparu. I'd like to thank the organizing committee of INBF for this opportunity to share with you my research on preterm gut microbiome supervised by Dr. Lee and his team. The headings are gut bacteria phyla in a healthy term babies. Then I switch my attention to very preterm babies, talking about the meconium, the first month of life, necrotizing enterocolitis and sepsis. And lastly, I'll talk briefly on the ongoing research. In a healthy adult gut microbiome, more than 90% are firmicules and bacteroides, and these are anaerobes. In the neonatal and the children's age group, there are four predominant phyla, namely the femicules and bacteroides, both of which can be aerobes or anaerobes. The actinobacteria are facultative or, and obligate anaerobes. Proteobacteria are, anaero are aerobes or facultative anaerobes, and these are potential pathogens. I'd like to draw your attention to the predominant genera of particular note is lactobacillus under femicules and bifidobacteria in actinobacteria. The reason why they are predominant in the baby's age group is because the only food for babies are milk. So exclusive breastfeeding is recommended for babies until, it, until six months of life. In a healthy baby, which is born full term, vaginal delivery and breast, exclusively breastfed, the initial facultative anaerobes of the actinobacteria and proteobacteria will pave the way for the bifidobacteria, bacteroides and clostridium in the subsequent days and weeks of life. In the vaginal delivery, the vaginal microbiome will seed the baby's gut with prevotella and lactobacillus. Breast milk will promote bifidobacteria and lactobacillus. This is as for the delivery. If it is caesarean section, the gut might gut uh, could be colonized by the proteobacteria and fumicules, which uh, is not uh, what it should be. The preterm babies, there are various grades of severity. It can range from the smallest baby, which is 700 grams, to 1,000 grams, and 1,500 grams. These are the worst grades of prematurity. That means babies born less than 37 weeks. They have high mortality, and we have to ensure survival with minimum morbidities. The preterm neonate is very different from a healthy term infant. Firstly, uh, there is a higher incidence of chorioamnitis, that is infection of the amniotic fluid, uh, which will then lead to this bacteria appearing in the meconium, that's the first stool of the baby. The grades of severity will influence the, the uh, feeding and the gut microbiota seeding and formation. The mothers and babies are very often given antibiotics, almost always 100%. And this will, this will disrupt the normal gut microbiota. Caesarean section is often performed in preterm birth and the feeding is delayed due to gut immaturity and it could be a mixture of breastfeeding and formula feeding. Worse still, the, the baby is exposed to the neonatal intensive care unit flora, which comprises of antibiotic resistant proteobacteria. Due to, the, due to the numerous antibiotics used for many of these babies as inpatient. So it's not surprising that there is a disruption of the normal gut microbiota formation in these preterm babies. This slide shows three photos. On the left is meconium, which is dark green tarry in nature. 
The second one, the middle photo shows a baby, the stool of a baby exclusively breastfed. So breastfeeding is easily digestible. So the stools are golden yellow liquid. On the right uh, is a baby on formula fed, and then the proteins are not well digested. Therefore, you can see clumps of uh, undigested protein. It is obvious that the bacteria in these three different stools are different. So let's talk about meconium. Bacteria PCR is present in up to 75% of preterm babies. And there will be abundance of firmicules, proteobacteria and actinobacteria, and less so of bacteroides. And the child has to make that transition over the couple of weeks and months into a normal gut microbiota formation. In the first month of life, the, the preterm baby is still preterm. So if they are born at 28 weeks, in the first month of life, they are 32 weeks. So it is still a preterm gut. Rosa showed a pattern progression of the bacteria in which the femicules, which the bacilli, which is a facultative androbes, will slowly come down. There will be a bloom of proteobacteria, and this will remain abandoned in the first month of life, and Clostridium, which will be the good bacteria, will slowly increase in the first month of life, and the proportion is as shown. The disruption to this normal microbiota colonization predisposes the neonates to the dreaded complication of necrotizing enterocolitis and microbial translocation, meaning that the, the bad bacteria in the gut may translocate in, through the intestinal mucosal cells into the blood, blood leading to late onset sepsis. Necrotizing enterocolitis occur in up to 7% of very low birth weight with 30% with mortality. This is the worst form of bacteria dysbacteriosis. Oh, incidentally, the, the x-ray shows the gut perforation and the picture shows the operation of a very unhealthy, unhealthy inflamed and infected gut. In a study published in Lancet in 46 NEC compared to 120 controls, there is increased gamma, gamma proteobacteria and reduction of femicules. Both are statistically significant in these patients. Mine in 2011 showed, studied nine NEC and nine control and showed there is proteobacteria is increased with a reduction of permacutes one week prior to the onset of NEC. With regards to late onset sepsis, which occurs in 15 to 25% of very low birth weight babies, 64% uh, of the 11 babies had the same bacteria in the stool before they appear in the blood. And just before late onset sepsis, mine show a late bloom of proteobacteria compared to the controls. So uh, we, are, we are interested to look at these uh, morbidities in this preterm, in these very preterm babies. So we compare the gut microbiota of babies with adverse events such as sepsis with the controls. From the research protocol, we gather clinical data, collect the stools and put the stools in a minus 80 degrees freezer. At this stage of this research, it is at the molecular biology lab procedures where we're trying to sequence the 16S R, R, and A. After getting the results, we will next proceed to microbiome analysis on the quantitative insight into the microbiome microbio ecology. We will look, among other things, at the alpha diversity, that is uh, species diversity within the community, beta diversity between two communities, the differential abundance, what specifically leads to differences between these two communities and whether they are statistically significant or not. So ladies and gentlemen, 
I've covered the briefly the gut, the bacteria gut microbiota in term babies. I've explained to you why the very preterm babies have very much different from a normal, normal healthy term infants. And there are bacteria present in the meconium first month of life, NEC and late on sepsis. And I have shared briefly our study on the gut microbiota in preterm infants with adverse event compared to controls. Uh, this is a literature review conducted by our team and is published in which we highlight the, the different gut microbiota in the amniotic fluid, meconium, first month of life, NEC, and late on sepsis. I'd like to thank, acknowledge, uh, my, and thank my supervisor and, the, and his team, the Monash University Malaysia for allowing me to do this research and the Department of Pediatrics and Hospital Sultana Amina for allowing me to gather clinical data and to collect stools from their patient. Thank you very much for your attention. If there are questions, uh, we, perhaps I can try to answer in the Q&A session. Thank you.